Hello, welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire, and as always, I'm glad you're here. Today, I have an off-the-edge die-cutting technique for you that works with pretty much any stamps and coordinating dies. It's a great way to create a fun border on a card, something a little different. Now, I decided to do cutesy because I haven't done cutesy in a while, but you definitely could do this technique with any style of stamps and coordinating dies. I have lots of examples, different sizes and orientations, in hopes that you could try one with products you have on hand. Let's start with this four and a quarter by five and a half inch penguin card. Now, if you look closely on the front border, it cuts around those little penguins. This is great for a one layer technique if you want a one layer card. I put a tiny bit of layering on mine, but not too much. For this card and my next card, I'll be using the new Mama Elephant Penguins Go Skating stamp set, along with the coordinating dies. I just thought this set was so fun and playful and perfect to try for this technique. Now, as I mentioned, this card will be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So I'm starting by making a note card of that size. Now I am using a very heavyweight cardstock for this. It's called Brutus Monroe, Not Your Mama's Cardstock. You can use whatever cardstock you want, but I'm choosing this very thick cardstock so that my markers don't bleed through. I'll talk about that in a moment. Now into my Misty, I'm putting my note card. This is the Misty stamping tool, which just helps with stamping. And I have my T ruler set up with it too, to create a straight line for me to arrange my little penguins. I want the bottom of each of these penguins to be right along the top of that ruler. I'm spacing them out a little bit so there's room to die cut between each. It's best if they don't overlap. It makes it much easier if they're apart a bit. Okay, so once I think I have them placed here, I'll go ahead and close the door on my Misty stamping tool to pick up the stamps. And now we can do our stamping. I'm stamping this with Gina K Black Amalgam Ink because this works great with any kind of Copic coloring, watercoloring, whatever you want. Okay, now it's time to do some die cutting. I'm taking the coordinating die for each of these images and lining it up. It's very easy to look through the opening of the die to make sure you have good placement. And I'm using some easy C tape to tape it in place so that it doesn't move. Next, I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum machine, but you could use whatever die cut machine you have. We're going to do a partial die cutting technique. I'm putting my piece into my die cut machine, but I'm only allowing the top cutting plate to cut half across our dies. So you can see the edge of the cutting plate cuts right down the middle of the dies. Anything under the cutting plate will cut, anything to the left. Anything to the right that's hanging out of the cutting plate will not cut. This is a, called partial die cutting. I will demonstrate this a few times in this video. There you can see how only the bottom portion of the die cut because that was the only area under that top cutting plate. So now I'm going to remove my tape and we're going to cut between each of these partially die cut images. Now there are a few ways you can do this. I find the easiest is to use my T-ruler and I make it so the edge of my T-ruler lines up where the die cutting stops on each of the penguins. I then use my craft knife to cut along the edge of the T-ruller between each of the penguins. So I'm just basically connecting where the die cut lines start and stop. So in between each of the penguins. Now there are many ways to use a craft knife. I'm not great with a craft knife, but I'm able to do this at least and I found this was the easiest way. So now we just need to do this little part down here and then we can remove the bottom of our note card. So this looks really cool because that front panel is continuous with a fun die cut border along the edge. You could just cut straight across and glue die cuts hanging off the edge, but this continuous piece looks really cool in real life. On the back, I like to use my paper sander to kind of sand off any rough edges. Now it's time to color these images and you can color them however you want. I choose to use Copic markers because they're fastest for me. I don't get fancy with them. I just do it to get some quick coloring. However, Copic markers really saturate in the paper and will bleed through if your cardstock isn't thick enough. Since this is a one layer card and the back side will be showing, I wanted to make sure to use a super thick cardstock. Thus, why I used the Brutus Monroe's Not Your Mama's cardstock. It's very thick. You could use whatever thick cardstock you want for this. If you don't have a thick cardstock and you're worried about the other side showing, I do have another way to do this technique that I'll show you later in this video. But here, I just did the quick coloring and I didn't have to worry about bleed through because my cardstock is so thick. 
I do keep really thick cardstock like Brutus Monroe, Not Your Mama's cardstock on hand for cases like this. Next, I wanted a dark bluish green piece of cardstock to go along the inside border to peek through. This is Hero Arts Bermuda cardstock. I also wanted to stamp some pinstripes on it. So I cut a piece of cardstock and now I'm using the Altenew pinstripe background stamp. I'm putting a sticky mat into my Misty stamping tool and I have the pinstripe stamp there. I'm laying my cardstock onto it, closing my Misty upside down, and the sticky mat will grab that cardstock piece and hold it there while I stamp on it. That way I can be sure to get good coverage. I'm stamping on it with Gina K Designs. Uh, I think this is Tranquil Teal card or ink. So I get a tone on tone look. I'm gluing that towards the bottom of the inside of the card. So it shows when the card is open or closed. I also wanted to add some subtle interest to the white area on the top of the card. Now you don't have to do this, but it doesn't take long and it really adds a lot. So I looked at this Mama Elephant Happy Holidays stamp set and I noticed there were three beautiful little snowflakes up there that would be great on the background. By the way, there are also great reverse sentiments on here that are great for sentiment strips too. So I took those three little snowflakes along with three that are included in the Penguin stamp set and I'm stamping those along the background with Gina K Sea Glass ink. So this will just give me a very light snowflake pattern along the background. I'm just kind of moving them around, making sure a couple are close together, but other than that, they're pretty spaced out. Next, I thought it'd be fun to add a little bit of sparkle to this. So I cut a thin strip of silver glitter cardstock, and I'm gluing it right at the top edge of this teal piece that's on the inside. This will be great because the silver will show on the outside, or in the inside of the card, but also will peek through on the outside of the card. It gives a nice finished look and things like that, again, don't take much time, but make a big difference in the final result. I then can flip that over and cut off any of the excess. Now it's time to pick a sentiment and I'm using a new stamp set from Mama Elephant that I'm really excited about. Actually, there are two of them. One has been out for a while and it is the Mama Elephant Easy Sentiments, which is over on the left. It has everyday sentiments. The new one that I'm using today is on the right and is the Easy Christmas Sentiments lots of holiday greetings. The cool thing is there is an easy sentiments die that works with either of these sets. It's a small die, so the price point isn't bad. And all you have to do is line up the stars on the side and the die with the stars that you stamp and it'll cut the sentiment strips out perfectly. Let me show you how. So I chose one of the trio of sentiments from the easy Christmas sentiment set. And I'm stamping that onto white cardstock with black ink. Once done, you take the coordinating die and line up the little holes for the stars on the side with the stars that you stamped. It's very easy to line up. Sorry, my head gets in the way. Once you have them lined up, you run that through your die cut machine and it'll cut all three sentiments perfect. And it cuts those little stars too that you can use as accents. But look at those great sentiment strips ready to go. I also like to use this die to cut blank white sentiment strips that I keep in this little container. It's a good size that works with a lot of different stamp sets, so I can have those ready. In this case, I'm gluing two extra little strips on the back of our main one, so it has a bit of dimension on our final card. I then glued that right to the bottom of that teal piece, so it shows whether the card is open or closed. Now whenever I have a simple card design, I like to add little details such as stamping a few additional things on the inside and adding embellishments. This time I decided to add little die cut silver glitter paper circles. I'll show you how I created these a little later in this video. But this is a nice alternative to gems or pearls because it goes through the mail nicely but still adds sparkle. So I put a few of these kind of falling down with the snowflakes. I also use my black glaze pen to make the eyes of the penguin a little bit darker and a little bit shinier. It really does make a big difference in real life. It kind of draws your eye to that. And I use this almost any time I stamp critters and have little eyes to make darker. I also used a glitter pen to make the cheeks a little shimmery. Again, this is another inexpensive tool that just adds little details that help a simple card. So here is the final result. The overall size is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And look at that smooth front that we have to the card with the die cut border. 
Again, if you want to, you could have just cut straight across the front of the note card and glued die cuts to hang off. But I really like this continuous look and it doesn't take much more effort. So there is my first example of doing this partial die cutting technique for off the edge die cutting. All right, let's do another example that's similar, but it's a different size and has more images. This is a mini slimline card that is six and a quarter by three and a quarter inches. This I wanted to do to show you that even small images work for this. In fact, I think small images work really well for this. This is the new Mama Elephant Little Girl Gnome Agenda stamp set. Now Mama Elephant has a lot of stamp sets with these smaller images that are super cute. Every theme you can imagine. And I found it works really well with this technique. I have a mini slimline note card that I created that is three and a quarter inches by six and a quarter inches. I also have my Misty stamping tool along with my T-roller. So I can line up my images straight along the edge of the T-roller. This time, I'm sticking them onto my T-roller. That way I can move them up and down once I'm done to make sure I like the placement on the note card. So watch, I can move this up or down and decide where I want it to stamp. Once I'm happy with the position, I'll just close the door of the Misty tool and grab those stamps and now I can stamp them on my note card. Again, I'm stamping with a Copic Friendly ink, but you could use whatever ink and coloring method you prefer. I have placed the coordinating dies around each of the images and taped them in place. Now it's time to do partial die cutting. So I'm putting this onto my cutting plates, but I'm positioning the top cutting plate so it only covers half of the die cut or whatever portion you want. I'm going just be about halfway. So anything under the cutting plate will cut, anything hanging out over there on the right will not cut. So I just run that through my die cut machine and I will get a partial die cut image for each of these. So you can see the bottom portion of each cuts. Now, if you have a different die cut machine, you can just have most of this hanging out from the edge of your cutting plates and run it through. You should be able to do partial die cutting with whatever die cut machine you have. All right, once again, I'm using my T-roller and a craft knife to cut between each of the images, kind of connecting where the die cutting stopped on each of the images. This will create a straight line between each of our little gnomes. I will show you an alternative to this method on our next example. Okay, once I've cut all of that, I can pull away the bottom portion here, and there we have our partial die cut edge. I just think that's a really cool look. I love how continuous it is, and it has that fun die cut border. Now it's time to do a sentiment, and I thought I'd share something that I haven't done in a while in a video, but I really like to do, and that is to combine two sentiments to create something new. So I have the older Mama Elephant scripty notes stamp set over on the left, and on the right is the newer Mama Elephant O Nomi Tree stamp set. It's got a pile of gnomes and a tree, super cute. But I'm just using a sentiment from each of these, and I'm going to cut them a bit to combine them to something new. From the set on the left, I took the message that says no one compares to you, and I cut it so I have just no one compares. From the set on the right, I took the message it's something like sending peace and joy to all my gnomies, and I cut that so I just have to all my gnomies. So now I can combine them to create a message that says no one compares to all my gnomies. And I can send this to some of my friends. I plan to make multiples of these. And each of those little gnomes I colored to be one of us. So I just did basic Copic coloring like before. Again, I did use the Brutus Monroe Not Your Mama's cardstock because it's thick. So I can be sure the marker won't bleed through to the other side. So I stamped no one compares to you, to you up on the top and I did three little dots with a black pen. I'm now gluing a peach piece of cardstock to the bottom of our note card on the inside like we did before. And then a darker peach cardstock strip right across the top of that. This will show whether the card is closed or opened. I can trim off the excess from that and now we can stamp the rest of our sentiment onto that peach strip. So no one compares to you is on the top and along the bottom we'll stamp to all my nomies and put three little black dots ahead of that. It's fun to combine different sentiments together to get something completely different. By the way, that nomi sentiment was a holiday sentiment and I changed it to a non-holiday card. So here's the completed card. It is six and a quarter by three and a quarter and it has that fun border along the front. 
I did use my black glaze pen for the eyes and my glitter pen for the, some of the hearts and the balloons, along with a bit of glossy accents. I think this is a fun way to make a simple card a little more special by adding that partial die cut edge. Now remember earlier I said Mama Elephant has a lot of stamp sets with little images like that. Here are just a few examples. This is the little superhero agenda set. Then you have the little unicorn agenda. Then the little ninja agenda. I mean, I tell you, they have every theme you can imagine. And all of these work great with this off the edge die cutting technique. So if you have any of these, no matter what the theme, you can give that a try with this technique. Okay, my next card example shows that you can do this with one stamp and die. And it's a very simple design. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, but it's oriented different than what we did before. It's also using that same penguin stamp set. This is a five and a half by four and a quarter inch note card. I'm putting it into my Misty stamping tool. And this time I'm putting the image kind of over here towards the right hand side. The opening of the card is over to the right. The crease is over to the left. I'm stamping the image along with the word joy. I thought this was neat because it looks like the skating of the penguin engraves in the ice the word joy. I also stamped a sentiment right above that. I'm doing all my black stamping all at once. Now it's time for the partial die cutting. I'm only doing one image with this technique, so I'm aligning up the coordinating die and again doing the partial die cutting technique where the plate is only covering half of the die and when I run it through, it cuts about half of it. Now it can either cut more or less, it's up to you, but I like to do about half. I think that works really well with this off the edge die cutting technique. Now it's time to cut the rest of the edge of that card. Instead of a craft knife and tea ruler, I'm using a paper trimmer. This is the Fisker's paper trimmer, which works really well with this. So I am going to cut around that stamped image. So I'm bringing the blade down, watch I'm pulling it down to the stamped image where the die cutting of the stamped image stopped. Then I will pick up the blade and take it to the bottom of the stamped image and cut the rest of it. So I'm cutting around the die cutting we've already done. Another alternative for this would be to draw a pencil line there and cut with your scissors along the pencil line. Now I thought I'd change this image up by giving him stripes to his scarf. Sometimes if I only have one stamped image on my card, I like to add more lines to it, like in this scarf, so I can add more colors to it. So I drew some lines with my pen and then colored it with my Copic markers. Again, I did nothing fancy. This card is made out of the Brutus Monroe, not your mama's cardstock, so I don't have to worry about bleed through. I thought it'd be fun to again stamp some small snowflakes on the front of the card for some added interest. So I'm using the same images I used before and stamping them once again with Gina K Sea Glass Ink. I also wanted to have a piece of cardstock on that right inside edge to show through and I thought it'd be fun to add texture to it. So I'm using an embossing folder. This is the new Simon Says Stamp Refracted Embossing Folder. It's brand new and I'm crazy about it. I'm just lining it up with the pattern inside the folder and then I'll tape the folder closed to hold it in place. I'll run it through my die cut machine. This particular folder and the Spellbinders machine works well if you have two layers of cardstock shim and then just the folder, that's it. It's a super thick folder, so you don't need much with it. It works with any machine, you just need to follow the instructions on their website. I'm putting some liquid adhesive on the back of this and then gluing it to the edge of the inside of the card. This will show whether the card is open or closed. I'm also putting a couple pieces of thin white cardstock right next to that. And then on top of that, a thin piece of holographic cardstock. This will show through again if the card is open or closed. The reason I put some additional layers of cardstock underneath the holographic is so that it was to the same dimension as the texture we did with the embossing folder. Now for the final embellishments. I thought it'd be fun to do pom-poms at the end of his scarf. However, pom-poms are very thick. So what I do is I cut them in half and I glue half a pom-pom where I want to on my card. So watch, you can just hold it between your fingers, carefully cut it with scissors, and that removes some of the bulk. I glue the flat edge that we've cut right onto our card and it works perfect. I also added some iridescent gemstones along with the snowflakes on the background. So here you can see that partial die cut edge, so much more interesting than just gluing a die cut onto the edge of a card. 
I did also stamp a few snowflakes to the inside of the card for some interest, but there's plenty of room to write a personal message inside. The card stands nicely, and it's just an interesting design. Overall, it's a simple look, very clean and simple. However, there's interest added due to the partial die cutting and also that embossing folder that we used. Oh, and by the way, once again, this is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. All right, now time for our next example. This one's a bit different and a bit stepped up. If you don't have super thick cardstock for your coloring or you just want to layer a bit more, this option's good for you. This is the cutest stamp set. It's the Mama Elephant Tree Picking Stamp Set. I thought this would be great for this technique. I love that image with the car and the tree on top. Now I thought I'd choose a few of these to go along the border along with the sentiment. This will be a mini slimline card. To create a mini slimline card, I thought I'd show you, you start with six and a half by six and a quarter inches and you score at three and a quarter. When you fold it, you end up with a card that is three and a quarter by six and a quarter. It can be a little bit wider if you want, but this is a good basic size and it doesn't require extra postage unless you have a lot of bulk or weight. Now this time I'm doing it a bit different. This time I am lining up my images on this note card. So I'm just positioning them straight along a line there on the bottom like we did before, but you can notice I'm stamping it onto a red note card. Now it doesn't matter how you stamp this or how well you stamp this, this will get covered up but we'll go ahead by starting and stamping on this red. Then I have a piece of white cardstock that is the same overall size, three and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'll stamp this on here. It doesn't matter how thick it is this time because I will have red cardstock behind it. So if my marker bleeds through, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna double stamp this just to make sure I have a nice black image. I love to do that. Double and triple stamping is my friend. On the white stamp piece, I'm lining up our coordinating dies with the images. However, my images are closer together this time than they were in the other examples. I can't die cut all of them at once because the dies would overlap. So I have these two dies in place and we'll do our partial die cutting as we've done before. This time I decided to put some tape on the cardstock to hold it on our first cutting plate just so it doesn't move as we're doing it. I will then take the second cutting plate and make it so it's only covering up part of those dies. So you can see the edge of the die there. Anything to the left of the edge of the die will cut. Anything to the right won't cut, just like we've done many times. One thing I did want to mention, Spellbinders does have a beveled edge to their plates. It's okay, you can still do partial die cutting. The die cutting will occur about halfway from the edge to the beveled edge. So you can still do it, just play around. You'll see it works great. Okay, so I did those two die cuts partially on the white. Now I'm doing the same on the red card. So I'm lining up the same dies with the stamping that we did on our red card. Be sure to open up your card before you do this. Once again, let's do the partial die cutting and I'll put that top cutting plate about the same as we did on the white piece. So it's gonna cut about halfway through that smaller die cut. I'll run that through and you can see you get a bit of a partial die cutting. But we still have those other two images. So uh, back to the white piece, I'll put the coordinating die around the other two images. And again, take the cutting plate and put it about halfway through those. Run that through our die cut machine. If it helps, you could draw a pencil line where you want the edge of the cutting plate to be each time, but I find it's easy just to eyeball. And then we'll do the same on the red note card. Line up those two last stamped images in the coordinating dies and do partial die cutting with those. Now we have our partial die cutting on the red note card and on our white note card. So we can do the cutting with the craft knife now. Might as well do both at once. So I'm lining up the white piece on the front of the red note card and taping it there so it doesn't move. I have my T ruler and I'm cutting between the images just like we've done on the other examples. This time I'm cutting through two layers, the white and the red. That way they will both be cut in the same place. You'd be surprised how easy this is. You just wanna be using a sharp craft knife and you'll cut through, look at that. Now you have that shaped edge and you have your white piece on the front and your red piece behind that. So now your note card, which is bright red, also has that cut edge. 
Okay, so now you can do your Copic coloring of that image. And if it bleeds through, it doesn't matter because the red cardstock is behind it. But before I color it, I did decide to trim a little bit off the top of the white so that when I glue this white piece on top of our red card, there's a little red trim at the top. I just felt like that made the card pop a little bit. Okay, so I did some Copic coloring off screen. Again, I don't do anything fancy. If you want some good instruction for Copic marker coloring, I recommend find, following Kathy Rakusin or taking our Copic class over on online card classes, and I'll link to those below. Now, I thought it'd also be fun to stamp something interesting on the red that peeks out from the bottom of the card. So I'm using three of the snowflakes that I showed you earlier, and I'm stamping them into the bottom of the note card using Gina K Designs ink. And I have an acrylic block. I just have three of them mounted on the acrylic block, and I kind of rotate and stamp them repeatedly to cover in that area on the bottom. By the way, this note card is made from Lawn Fawn Chili Powder cardstock, a great red. And this ink is Gina K Red Velvet, which is a nice dark red. Now we need to stamp our sentiment onto the front of our card. So I'm stamping this with black ink and it says, have a tremendous Christmas. And it's from the same stamp set as all of the other images. I also want a white piece for the inside of the card where I'll write a personal message. So I'm making a little mark with a pen here so I know how tall to make it. And it is six and a quarter inches wide like our note card. This will gl get glued right to the top and it'll be a place for us to write that personal message. I usually like to have a spot that has white cardstock for that personal writing on the inside so it stands out nicely. But you could leave it if you want to and maybe use a white gel pen on the inside if you prefer. Now we can glue our stamped piece to the front of the note card. So it'll line up great thanks to that stamping that we did on the red and on the white. I stamped them in the same position, die cut them in the same position, so I know it'll line up nicely. Now earlier I promised you I would show you how to create small little sparkly embellishments without much dimension. So I'll show you that now. You just need to use any die that cuts tiny little circles, such as the Hero Arts confetti die. This background die is great for this. I'm cutting it from silver glitter cardstock and I end up with lots of tiny little silver glitter dots of different sizes. Now, if you don't have this die, there are many dies that cut tiny little circles. You'd be surprised. Even a lot of coordinating die sets come with them. I like to do this and keep them in a little container like this in my drawer. So anytime I need flat, sparkly embellishments, I have these ready. I'm also cutting a few th thin strips of silver glitter cardstock, the same one, that I can add as an embellishment. Silver glitter cardstock or any kind of sparkly cardstock is great for this. You don't need much to add interest. Now this cardstock was only six inches wide. So I glued a thin strip down and then a little bit more to make it meet the length. You'll see me do it again here. I glued this one down and then another one. No one will ever know that it wasn't one continuous piece. Now onto this tree. I put little drops of liquid adhesive and now I'm adding some of those silver glitter dots that we created. So look at your dies. You might find dies that create tiny little stars or circles or hearts or different little shapes that you can use as embellishments on your card. It's a great way to keep your card not too thick, but also add a little bit of texture, sparkle and interest. Now to the center of the tires, I use glossy accents for some shine. And then once again, for the eyes of the critters, I use the black glaze pen. These little details don't seem like much, but they're inexpensive things you can add to your cards over and over that will really make them stand out. Now the completed card is six and a quarter by three and a quarter, which is a mini slimline card. And I will link below to the mini slimline envelopes I like. Again, these don't require extra postage unless they're thick or they weigh a lot. This one should be fine to go through the mail. Now remember, when you open this one, the decorative edge or that die cut edge that we have is red. It, because we did that trick where we cut both the note card and the white piece. So you don't have to worry if your ink or your coloring bleeds through to the other side. Also, this makes for a thicker card. So if you prefer that, this is a good option. Now I have one more card to show you. I don't have enough time in this video to show you how to make it, but it kind of steps up this technique and allows you to use some of your old border dies with it. 
I will tell you where you can find a video showing how to make it. Now this card uses the Mama Elephant Koala stamp set. This is a cute one that I've had sitting out for a while. I've been wanting to use it in a video and I thought this image would be great for it. Since this is a smaller image and I'm only using one, I thought I'd do a smaller card size. This is a four bar card size. It's three and a half by five inches. And there are envelopes available for that size and I'll link to them below. It requires normal postage. Now check this out. I used a decorative kind of border along that, the scallop border, and did the partial die cut off the edge technique that I've shown you. I really wanted to include this in today's video, but this video is long enough as is. If you want to see a video showing how to do this card, just head over to the Facebook page called Share Handmade Kindness. I have a link below. This is a group that we've started that is a very happy, positive place where you can share card ideas and hang out with other like-minded people. If you want to check that out, it's linked below. We'd love to have you there and you can see a video showing how to create the koala card. In that group, I also do an informal craft chat video every day along with discount codes and other things. We have a lot of fun. And if you're still listening to this, God bless you because <laughs> think my videos are long and I appreciate you sticking with me till the end. In the end here, I have a couple other videos that might be of interest to you. They have a similar technique and may give you some more ideas. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon and have a wonderful week.